And you showed us the um, atomic structure of the ribosome, and that's why you won the Nobel. Uh, why is this important? Okay, so <clears throat> supposing you want to understand something. You know, it's been true ever since the history of science that seeing something allows us to get to the next level. For example, until Vesalius started dissecting human bodies, the West didn't have a good idea of human anatomy. It's only when he actually looked at the human body. Then with microscopes, people discovered that there were cells, and all living creatures are made up of cells. That transformed biology. The, ana <coughs> the analogy I like to give is, supposing you were a Martian hovering over the Earth, and you saw these little objects move in straight lines and occasionally turn at right angles. Uh, that's if you're in the US rather than in India, where it could go sort of in any direction. And you wouldn't have any idea what this object was or how it worked. If you got closer, you would see that other littler objects entered it, and then it would move. And then when the littler objects got out, it would stop moving. Still wouldn't know what this thing was. You got closer and looked at more detail, you would see it had four wheels and some lights and so on. You'd still have no idea how it worked. It's only when you open it up and see that there's an engine, it has pistons, the pistons drive the crankshaft which connects to the wheels and there's steering wheels that give direction and so on. That's when you know how a car works, okay? Otherwise you can't figure it out without knowing what it actually looks like and how it's constructed. So if you want to understand a molecule, you have to know uh, what it actually looks like as a very first step. And that was the big problem that we had. For a long time, uh, uh, DNA was the glamorous thing and RNA, which is one kind of RNA, which is part of uh, the ribosome, was not so popular. It was almost like everybody knew DNA. DNA was the Salman Khan of molecular biology and RNA was the more talented uh, Nawasuddin Siddiqui. Uh, so is, uh, after you reveal the atomic structure, uh, do you think now, now anything is changing? Uh, it didn't change as a result of our structure. Rather, it changed uh, when in the 1980s, some scientists solved a fundamental puzzle about the origin of life. So DNA is a <clears throat> molecule that carries information. And proteins are molecules that carry out function. And it was hard to imagine how life even got going if you needed two completely different types of molecules, and moreover, one of them was coded for by the other. How could this system even start? We're talking about how life might have evolved from chemicals. So <clears throat> in the 1980s, people found out that RNA which was originally just thought to be a copy of DNA, just a temporary working copy, also existed in other forms. And in many other forms, it could actually carry out chemical reactions like proteins. So suddenly, RNA was a molecule that could both carry genetic information and carry out function. So in one molecule, you could carry out all of the, you know, some of the major functions of life. So people felt from the 1980s onward that life probably began with RNA. Then came proteins, because the ribosome is mostly made of RNA, and it was used to make protein. And it's only after the first proteins were made, eventually, that the system decided to encode it in the form of genes. So in some sense, DNA is the most junior of this trio, even though it's you know, become big in the public's m mind, and of course now it's the controlling molecule. So that's what gives it its importance. But it is the latecomer to life compared to the other two. 